these are always um, these are always bad ideas as episodes. Doing them this way, why? Well, it's great that you're here. That that's good. But whenever it's like, yeah, we'll just put the game on in the background. It's some yeah, but <laughs> and then you went. It's like I just, just thought you had the game on in the background for every episode because I can't see that you're actually watching soccer on your computer. No, I only do that occasionally. Right. So what do we got here? We got. It, this is like the people start like it. Of it's old season. school energy. This is like the Turn start. Of the, no, leave it on. I think we should leave it on. Let's make sure it's recording. Okay, we've done thirty six seconds. I thought you meant. <laughs> I thought you meant it's always a bad idea to trust the Zoom. No, recorder. it's never let us down. Never. It's great. I think even one time, it did die or something. It still recorded it somehow. Like it went into stamina mode and. Like think, upload, it sort of like backed it up itself somehow. Back it we up. We thought we'd lost back it. Back that ass up. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. A song? It's back a song. that ass back up. Back that ass up. It's yeah. kind of West Coast, Ben Harper. We talking about LL ben Cool J. That's East Coast. East Coast, yeah. As you know, Ruben. We talked about that. Couldn't yeah. be more, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like he calls him L. L. I L call him came L. by. Yeah, as a 16 My year dorm old. room. We never talked about, um, on that last episode, when we were talking about Rick Rubin and Rick Beato, mm -hmm. how, well, I've got a couple of things to say, actually. I figured there'd be more to say about that. Well, we never talked about, I guess, I'm going to sound a bit like miserly and grumpy saying this. It's fine, we usually do. I know, but I don't want people to think I'm a hater. <laughs> but like... On Beato? <laughs> no, just in general. <laughs> okay. A music hater. Right. But like what? Okay, it's awkward at the best any time you do this. Mm -hmm. But like what is with their level of earnestness when listening to music? It's just because the camera's rolling. Yeah, like they have to do it. When Rick Rubin's at home with his buddies like hitting the bong yeah. and like listening to some fucking beasties or whatever, he's yeah. not like... He's not like eyes closed. Like, when they play Slayer, Beato is not interested. He doesn't care, but he's like, he's like, I guess you head kind of head. Yeah, you to headbang this. maybe to this. Yeah, he's kind of like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, that I was doing. I was pumped. That was sounded the best of anything they played to me. Did you look at what I? I you probably didn't because if you had, you, we'd, we'd be talking about it. I sent you an email. Of oh, like, I did. I did look at that. It was psychedelic. This is the other side of Beato. I I saw... It's him breaking yeah. down a Beatles song in the most confusing, like, <laughs> deranged, speed freak way yeah. where he's playing it on guitar at the same time as a singing ticket to ride and being like, and it's mix. It's mixolydian. It's mixolydian. And he's like... Going off about like, I mean, who would? This is just an A chord, but he's playing an E. It's an E flat over. He's playing. So John is singing that, and and then we got Paul comes in. I mean, who else? This is genius, and he's breaking it down. I think that that's a big part of his. And you can see it's a live stream, mm -hmm. and just boomers are just tipping him five bucks, five bucks. Like keep going, Rick. Like <laughs> it's like lightning yeah, bedding. Yeah, like, it is. What's no, he gonna like, do next? He, yeah, and it's like. <laughs> And he's just sort of, it's really weird to watch. Just plug in the meter. Yeah. Keep, <laughs> keep going, man. And he's like, sing it. I, you, I got, I'll post it. Yeah, yeah. It's really weird. You like. know what's so weird about that stuff is like, someone also sent me like a similar thing of a guy breaking down the Abbey Road finale medley. Nice. Like, But like explaining it. Trying to explain it so that people can understand it musically, like based on the chords. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, so what they're doing here is they're going to the dominant seven. No, this is and what it was. And, is, but yeah. like, and I watched it and I'm like, stuff like that. I'm like, I know you're trying to explain I it so people it can understand less. it, but it's actually harder to yeah, understand when is. you do this than if you just listen to it. And be, well, there's no also, way the Beatles talk to each other in that way. They were just like, we no need to get back to A. No one a song. Like, this is in A, so like, like let's end it in D and then go back to the A or whatever, you know. Like they're doing Ticket to Ride, and the best way I would explain that is like just by being like the verses kind of sound birdsy ish. Yeah, 
Exactly. Or the birds sound jangly. tickets ride I wrote this jangly one. And he's breaking down the melody and the jumps in the melodies <laughs> and like the fact that it's an only an A and it's we it's really And he's just singing a song. Five like, bucks, five bucks, five John bucks. John Lennon's dollars. just singing yeah. a song in A. Yeah. That's it. Called Ticket it's a, to it's Ride. It's a melody. It's like, he doesn't it's not he doesn't have to like notate the melody. That's weird. Uh yeah, well if I think I said just find a time to watch like a couple of minutes of this, but I realized that I'd already skipped to about ten minutes in, so you probably didn't. I didn't. See I didn't how get, de- even get that far. Yeah, yeah. I found another video. I think someone sent us of him. It was an ep. It was, I don't know if he does episodes or what he does, but it was him complaining about how he doesn't get that many views. It was like him explaining. He's like, I have like the number ninety two. Most popular YouTube channel. No, he, I saw that one because that came up too. Yeah, what he's was not he complaining. T- he's talking about. It's actually quite interesting, and we could take. What was he talking? We could learn a fucking thing. Yeah, or two I'm sure. From that guy. Yeah, he was into the analytics of it. Oh, he was big. You know, but I was a, like, he's is a this beautiful mind? I'm not saying he was complaining. I'm saying like, is that what he does though? Like, why is that entertaining to watch that? Well, he just. I think he's just at this point kind of Truman showing his life. Right. I like see. he's like live streaming his life. And it's really modern media. It's like post-historical media. Because even with the Rick Rubin thing, they're just on their phones the whole time, kind of. Mm-hmm. Which is like, play a song, you know, can yeah. you play a tune? And like, and he's looking at like his YouTube algorithm and his, yeah, data. He's it is Truman it. Show, yeah. So I think he just kind of, there's such a need for content from people. Right. I mean, you know, we've had people like, I mean, think about our our friend, friend of the pod, Max Frost. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the internet is maybe, maybe yeah. in his case at times, taken a kind of golem style, I'm a ring style somewhat approach. Somewhat concerned for him. Yeah. yeah. That he's doing, he's just finished doing that mi- mix, like doing the Queen, tournament. Play, the Pink Floyd Co- does a Queen covering. Song. People. He just finished it. It seemed like it, it went on for six months, and, he, and and uh, immediately started it. Again. I I I finally wrote you. I said it's finally poor Max. Like it is a bit like the Ring, where like the yeah. power of the likes, the follows. There was one post he did, and if you're listening, Max is like, I'm, we're not trying to throw shade. Like I'm just a quite bit, the opposite. Actually, I kind of just want. I want that level of infamy. <laughs> but also, he did an episode, he did a thing where he talked about that tournament. He's like, it got me 52,806 yeah. new followers. Yeah. And this, and I was like, the numbers are the ring. Like the, the power the of ring. them. And I was like, I was sort of updating you on it. And I said, finally, he's finished it. And mm-hmm. whoever won the tournament. I think Pink Floyd won. Yeah, Pink Floyd won. And then... The next one, he was like, who are we doing next? Like, send me. I'm going to do it all again. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Um, but, you know, he seems to be... He's got a new single out, I saw yesterday. a nice house in Nashville. Yeah. And, and Rick he, Beato, I mean, like, that guy, I, I think if you're at that level, he's <laughs> really up there. Like, he's making a lot of money. Yeah. So that... that um, but again, the, the ring. The, it's the ring. The interview, yeah, but it, the ring... Money. Power. These yeah. are all the ways of Sauron. It's the, f- the dark side of the force, man. Yeah. Fear, anger, jealousy. Yeah, but he's not jealous, is he? He's Who isn't? Beato. It sounded a bit to me like he was a little bit jealous of Mr. Beast. No, he wasn't jealous of Mr. Beast. <laughs> sounded a bit like it to me. No, he was saying... He the, wants to be the top earnest music YouTube he, channel. Oh, he is, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, he is the top earnest music. You, he's the only one. Okay. He's easily... To, he's like the 92nd <laughs> biggest YouTube channel there is or something crazy. Yeah. It's actually crazy how successful he is. <laughs> it goes to show how big classic rock yeah, still is. exactly. And yet... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We should have more followers. What the hell, man? See, but don't get yeah. you know distracted by the That's ring. That's the ring. The ring just then. Calling me. It was. It was. Wait a minute. We should. Yeah, exactly. And then what's, why can't I have those followers? Yeah. yeah. Why can't it be me? Yeah. And then also you get what you, you get, the things you want. Like you'll get to interview Dave Gilmore. Yeah, exactly. But it won't be the interview you want it no. to be. No. It'll have to be like you... You have to do it and be like, 
my mind is blown. But that's the thing that's weird about him with the Ruben stuff is mm-hmm. it, it's it's obsequious because when he interviews people, he mm-hmm. always is like, what is going on? Like astonished by you them making to. music. You have to do that. Yet he will then break down songs by people in this like in beautiful mind style equation way. <laughs> but he never talks to the artists in that same way. Well, maybe he does. I mean, I've only seen I the ones he, that... I've only seen the Rick Rubin ones, so... Yeah. I think he likes to be amazed and yeah. then show people, I know I can solve this. I can this. see beyond the... Using math and using letters math. and numbers. Yeah, that's why he's into the equations and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. And like the, the algorithms and the data on his streaming. Mm-hmm. New media. He yeah. just thinks that old media is dead. That's what he's talking about on that thing. Yeah. Like that. Well, I guess so. Well, I mean, it is. It is, yeah. It's done. Is music dead? No. Okay. I don't think so. We, we, co- I just like we to covered check in. that. I just like to check in now and then about that. So I'm... Um, music being dead is proportionally related to your own feelings about music. Like music itself will, rock and roll will never die. (laughs) But you or like, not you, but like the royal you, Uh music dies when you let it die because you've given up on it. Right. Like, but it's still going. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. People have to believe in it for it to be real. What's that? It's like a movie. Um... Yeah, I like know what Santa you mean. or something. Right. Yeah, it's it's Claus or whatever with the Santa Claus, like with Tim, Elf? with Tim uh, the, the Tool end Man of Taylor. Elf, like the Christmas no, spirit it's with Tim. The it's Tool a bit Man like Taylor. end of Elf when they're all singing and then the if you believe in it, yeah, it it's real. Mm-hmm. That's what rock and roll is like. Yeah, it's true. You know, you can kill it in your own soul, but it's and never heart going anywhere at any time. Yeah, but yeah, and it still exists temporally, yeah. <clears throat> psychotically, mm-hmm. sexually. Yeah, it doesn't exist sexually right now. No, it doesn't. No, I would say that that's kind of it used to exist more sexually <laughs> than it does now. Somebody said something really funny that just made me think of Luke, and. Somebody posted something that said, like, because I think of Luke as the personification of rock and roll, yeah. it was really strange to hear him in the real world interacting with his gas man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think he's never yeah. really pulled back the veiled curtain That's in that way yeah. before, you know? Yeah. Um, that was so. in... Uh, that's related to the last episode. That Tonight's the night episode. Yeah, yeah, that was very good. That he brought quote-unquote sanity to the ranking yeah i don't know about that but um i'm in vancouver i just want to say something nice it's great to be back in the city oh yeah uh i saw a guy on the sky trade <laughs> i saw a guy on the sky trade dressed kind of like henry the eighth nice yeah he had like the cap yeah and like a, yeah. The, the sort of Velvety. I vest. understand. Yeah, was he wearing like and kind the of puffy tight sleeves? Was he like, wearing tights? Not tights, but everything else. Right. And I was like, it's just great to be back in the city. It was that yeah. kind of thing. And then I saw on a bus stop uh, billboard yeah. that Kathy Bates is going to be playing Matlock in a new show. Nice. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, because I live out in the country now, I don't get these kind of cool things to you see. Don't get to it's really wide eyed. And bushy tailed walking around picking up on that. He did, he, the he, Lord must be in New York City kind of energy. Yeah, he didn't. Well, I hope not that far. No. Not like Midnight Cowboy vibe where I end up, you know. Well, it's also in selling uh, my body. No, but it's also in You've Got Mail. Sure. That's okay, a good great. Vibe. <laughs> That's more what I'm yeah. going for, yeah. The You've Got Mail Thanks. one. I watched When Harry Met Sally last night. Yeah, so did I recently. Yeah. Great. Uh, you didn't like it? You know, I don't think Billy Crystal's good enough for her. Yeah. For Meg. I don't think <laughs> I mean, she's a goddess. I don't think he's quite good enough for her. She likes it. He's, he's quirky. It's the first... Nora Ephron kind of wrote the first... Exam- it, well, it's Woody Allen. 
Yeah. That's the bench. Annie Hall is the benchmark. Annie Hall's the benchmark. And from there, you know, they kind of, that's the, the next step. Well, Carrie is, Fisher's kind of in. You know, they got some old, yeah. you know, old guard into the movie. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruno Kirby's good in it, his friend. Yeah. I just don't know if. You got to understand if he's I don't really understand Billy Crystal. You got to understand that like the end of His when Harry look. met Sally when he does that speech he's like I'll tell you what I do know. Yeah. I know that every time I wake up in the morning yeah. I you come first. That's super cheesy to watch now but you have to understand that was kind of the first I end of a rom-com speech like no, that. listen that's not my issue with Billy Crystal. Okay. Okay. No, it's I you know I'm a sucker for that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm I love that. Billy Crystal, you just think he's not quite. His look, he's not Tom Hanks. Even Tom Hanks, but you I can't mean, have. You don't want a heartthrobby guy in a rom com leading role as a man. No, it's supposed to be the nice guy, the every man. But he's, he's like not a nice good guy. Good sense of humor. He's got a good sense of humor. It's I not. Guess. It's not the hot guy who's like no at but, the gym. They're always the one she leaves for the. I nice know, Mister Big and whatever. Yeah. Like, no, I understand that, but. He just, I think he just could have had a slightly better look. Yeah. His hair, it's his hair, I think. Yeah, and he's he is quite uh, kind of like pessimistic yeah. and like schlumpy as a guy. Yeah. yeah. But like they always are a bit. Right. Like in You've Got Mail, he's kind of an asshole the whole time. Until well, the end he, when he's like he's super nice. He's literally ruined her business. <laughs> Ruining her life, yeah. And Sleepless in Seattle is a good one because it's like he, well, that's the they don't know each other because they don't know each other. And he's he's he had a, he's had some problems. Oh, that's great. I mean, oh, it'll kill you that. Yeah, the whole thing. You know what won't kill you, and in fact, what they say is, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. No smoke coffee. Nice, because you're drinking it right now. I I'm having a no smoke. Uh, what did you do for me? I don't even know. Was that an Americano or? I made you an American, like an Americano, but I. Little but, bit of water because you want to taste it. Yeah. I mean, I prefer, like, normally when I have people around and I'm, I'm, I bring out the no smoke. Yeah. I, it's only because it was you. It was mm -hmm. different. No smoke coffee.com. Well, the, um, I believe the blend was called Kind of Beatles. It was a custom blend. Sort of my thing. Yeah. But normally, what I do when people come over and I bring out, they say, you know, they say, you know, I'm like, do you want a tea or coffee? And they say, I'd like a coffee. I'm like, okay, well, this, this room is going to be transported into more of a tasting lounge. Well, what usually happens, I think, yeah. is that people say to you, hey, man, get out the smoke. Yeah, and then you got any smoke? They, y y you know, they're asking for like w weed for you to get yeah. out the bong and the pipes yeah, and the stuff. Pipe, and yeah. then you bring them all in americano, and they're like, "Dude, what the fuck is this?" And we I'm just like, "Just try it." And you're like, "Just try it." Yeah, just try it. And then they do, and they're like, "Whoa!" Well, and instantly they become grown ups, adults. Yeah, it's they like start listening working. to Summoner's Tales by Sting. Yeah, they start working uh, more efficiently. Yeah, like if you, for example, better parents. I would say if you, yeah, yeah, if you're in a relationship right now with someone who's like lagging, slacking off a little bit, or you have a friend or a bandmate perhaps who's not quite giving as much as you'd, you know, expect. Yeah, you know, not pulling their weight, and you kind of want them to grow up a little bit. I would guaranteed. This yeah. is a cast iron guarantee. If you go to nosmokecoffee dot com, yeah, tons of different products on there. Mm -hmm. Too many to even discuss. Really, I'm not willing to discuss. Them. Yeah, <laughs> too much perspective. Yeah, you go sure. on there, order some coffee, whichever one it is. I guarantee will instantly turn that person into more the kind of person you want in your life. <clears throat> if you're in your 30s and 40s, amen. Little piece amen. of man, go off, Johnny. Little piece of advice. Give up the smoke, get yeah. into the no smoke. That's what I've always okay. said. It's not a good look pulling out the bong no. uh, when you're 38 you years a old. apple that Make, you've turned into a bong. <laughs> like a it's, fucking Pepsi bottle with yeah, holes punched out of the bong. Yeah. Make yourself a nice latte. Put the bucket away. Yeah. Let's just, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's grow up. Let's grow up with no smoke. No smoke.com. Eyewall15. It's no smokecoffee.com. Promo code, I've got a great deal yeah. for you guys. Yeah. Promo code IWALL15. If you want to get signed to Jack Jaguar, you want yeah. to get signed to Seagull Canadian, mm -hmm. any of these big indie labels, yeah. you, you think 
Do you think caspacho soup is meant to be served warm? No. <laughs> You can't show up to these guys and they'll test you on it and say like, hey, you want a coffee? And if you don't say you're drinking no sweat, if you don't know what this kind of stuff tastes like, mm -hmm. you're not getting signed. No. So just consider that when you reach for your next coffee. Yes. No smoke, coffee.com, I will 15. People have been ordering it. We just heard, I just heard from Ted, a band from New York put yeah. in a big order. Yeah. Let's just, just take a minute. Think about that. Yeah. New if you, York. If you're just hanging out in your bedroom making music with your acoustic yeah. guitar and garage band, yeah. a fucking band from New York. Yeah, the Velvet Underground. <laughs> Essentially, Maybe. Yeah. You know, potentially. Well, the Ramones are yeah. drinking this it's, stuff. It's yeah. either, those, either of those two. Yeah, television, probably. Probably television. Could be yeah. the Talking Heads. It's probably Patti Smith, really. Yeah, it could be any of those bands. She seems like she likes coffee. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not Paul Simon. I grab, grab another beer here. It's not Paul Simon. I follow my no smoke up with a beer. Well, I know that. We've been, it's 20 minute mark. You've been doing it for a long time. Let's see what time we're on here. Yeah, we are. It's 20 minutes exactly. Wow. So, so we're here to talk about on the beach, and I want to get into it. Okay. So let's get what into you it. Got? Well, I listened to it like three times in the past three days. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll start it off. Okay. What really got me, first of all, is that. As opposed to these other albums we've been listening to, there's arrangements okay. that are really cool. Like on See This Guy About to Rain, it's got that... There's cool little melodies. Walk On obviously has a lot of like hooks. Yeah. Like... Bam, bam, like and I thought that... Yeah. It seems like they thought about it. They recorded it at Sunset Sound, yes. which is pro... So maybe Neil thought he kind of had a bit of a pro record on his hands. Self-produced. No, not, what's his name? Briggs is gone. Or is it both of them? I don't know. <laughs> it's not cool stories in rock. So yeah. I've forgotten all the details because we're not supposed to know them. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the, I don't know. It's difficult to talk about records that are so ingrained in your personality like when i was we've talked about this before like when i was 18 i hitchhiked up and down the west coast um and i had a cassette player and i made like mixtapes and one of them was on one side on the beach and on the other side if i can only rem remember my name wow I mean, that's our whole podcast yeah. on a mixtape. Well, I've not matured or developed since I was. I've been thinking about that. Old. I think this is now we're getting into a good conversation. It's it all relates to the yeah, album, of course. I was thinking about that. That what you do musically, the things you learn, the things you learn on the guitar, yeah. the music, the records you play when you're like sixteen to twenty three or mm -hmm. something. Yeah, that's all there is. That's, I still play the same way and yeah. do all of that as I did. I've heard a lot of people say that, like Clapton and people being like, oh, I just play the same licks that like I learned when I was 15. Yeah. And like that's what I do, you know. And I think that... And then occasionally kill a child. <laughs> just kind of the thrill of life, of playing guitar was lost at some point in my early 20s for him. But no, I do know what you mean. <laughs> but, dude, I watched that video today with Paul McCartney telling him yeah. backstage. You watch that every couple of weeks just to get your rocks off. Well, hey. it was funny because your, your, your bandmate, Brandon, I'm playing a show on yeah, Thursday yeah, with him, yeah. and he's going to come up and play a solo on one of my songs. Nice. And he was asking me how I want to do it, and I sent him a voice memo that was like, yeah. I was Paul. He didn't get I it. I was like, D... G, yeah. G, G. And I'm like, just do whatever it is you yeah. do. You'll you know, your kind of, of peace your freedom. thing, you know, blah, 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 blah. Just that will work. Yeah. Anything like that will work. Will that work. <laughs> and it's just like, he's like, yeah, okay, cool. I guess you really, you know, think what I do is great. Well, he's very good, but I don't know about his, you know, improvisation. If it, As long as there's not a weird <laughs> chord in there. Well, same with Clapton. I but it was more like McCartney's just like just do your blues thing and nobody cares. You know, you will just play in G. Yeah, G E minor. Yeah, it just, will work. It it will, will, yeah. Free freedom. Fucking weird. Yeah. Anyway, 
But yeah, I was just thinking about that. That what, like, like the the formative years of your life that you can't transcend them creatively. I, I just think they're so important. Yeah, what you put in your brain during those years. What you like, put in your body. In your body, for sure. Probably more important what you put in your body now. I would think is mean affects you a bit more. Yeah. But like I was thinking about my daughter, and that I just want to be very sure. Not that I'm in control of no, those you're years, not in control of it. but that when I am feeding her music and culture and art and films and everything in those years, it's Fox News. To give her the good stuff. Yeah, the Fox News element of it. The right wing <laughs> kind of Nugent. Make sure she knows what's going on. Yeah. She's informed. Yeah. yeah she's no. informed. <laughs> Our freedom is informed. Your freedom, yeah. your choice. Because I can remember. You got to be careful on Souk too, because like there's probably a oh, lot dude, of that hanging fucked. around. It's fucked. Completely libertarian yeah. style, like guys with tanks full of water, like 3,000 gallons of water yeah. buried, like ready, just waiting ready. for the apocalypse. Yeah. Concerned about plastic straws and the carbon tax. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. One of my neighbors the other day was like, you know, if, thing, if, th- if push comes should, to shove, yeah. you and I, I have enough. He told me I have enough artillery. You and I could be a small army. <laughs> he said it to me. I swear to God. But he's a really nice guy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is. I'm like, you, man, don't, you know, I don't. If you, unless you like, you know, the. Unless it's like Waco or Ruby Ridge or like these like very specifically <laughs> yeah. like pertinent moments in mostly just American history. Yeah. Like the problem now is that the internet coupled with living off the land or off grid, like all like in remote places, you're kind of at once becoming distrustful just naturally antisocial because you're living yeah that's which all is a, it is which but like be, being antisocial and uh, like hermiting is like a totally fine way to live your life that's a woodstockian way to live your mm-hmm. life mm-hmm. the problem is when you also add into the mix access high speed access to facebook yeah and so you kind of get you start thinking that what is happening outside your little world is crazy and it's actually just pretty normal and nothing's really changed yeah i mean i feel grateful that i'm still tethered to reality in terms of this stuff but i know that a lot of people who live out there who've been out there for a long time and like you say they're in their 50s 60s 70s have the internet yeah it's easy for them to be convinced yeah that something is coming you know a storm. Yeah, it is. A great storm. Well, the su- it started with the talk of the tsunami because we're near the sea. You know? Well, that's a big one. And all I guys. wanted to know is if he, you know, I was like, will the wave hit us? Because he knows everything. He, well, what did he say? And he said, <laughs> did I tell this already in the fun? No. Okay. He was playing his guitar. He, he plays guitar. Yeah. Well, he's and, got a lot of time when he sounds like that. Yeah. And I, Unless I, he's prepping the whole time. I was walking by and he was playing uh, the chords to Brown Eyed Girl. And he said, I mean, not tracks yeah, and politically these days. He said, he said, hey, John, do you know how to play the lead guitar part on Brown Eyed Girl? And I said, sure. sure you know. Man, yeah. And uh, he was like, we should jam on that together sometime. Mm-hmm. He said, because I like playing the chords, but I could never play that. Right. And I was like, well, you know, you don't could. sell yourself yeah, short. You, you could, probably yeah. could. And he was like, okay, okay, okay. And then I started walking away and I was like, by the way, you know, the I was I was thinking about the tsunami the other day and the I was big like one. Yeah, and I was like I was like, you know, I figured if anyone has a plan, you do. You know, and he said, "You know where I'm going to be sitting when the tsunami?" I'll be in a hot hits? air balloon. No, he said, "Right here playing my guitar." I know. <laughs> He's like, because the wave is not going to reach us up here. He's like, "We might get a small tidal flow and in down into the lower surge." Yeah, down to the lower field, but yeah. it's not going to hit us. And then I was like, oh, great to know. No worries, and keep walking. Yeah. And then he's like, you know what you do need to worry about is other people who aren't prepared. Yeah. People who didn't think about what they're going to have for lunch that Looters. day. Looters. He's like, and they come looking around yeah. for food. Yeah. People who are prepared yeah. to take what you have. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> I'm starting to see yeah. where this is going. Yeah. And I'm like, and he's like, you know, you see my gate here? You mm-hmm. see my dogs? Yeah. So they don't, they look there and they think, we're not risking that. He's like, you don't have a gate. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, he's like, all you need is a gate and a dog. And you're, and he's like, 
And I was like, okay, yeah, it was getting kind of intense. Yeah. And then that's when it went. He's like, he's like, you know, but uh, you don't need to worry. He's like, because I've got, I've got enough here. You and I could be a small army. Yeah. And he said, you know, my son, military, infantry, yeah. served in some pretty, served. some pretty hairy conflicts. He yeah. said, and he said, you know, where he's coming if the earthquake or tsunami hits, yeah. right, right here. here. I mean, it's. It, I was just like, I don't know about all the. I said to him, I was like, I'll, I'll do what I can for you, you know. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like that guy's. If you need food, he might. He's a good. Stay on his side. Stay on his side. Good neighbor to have. If, if worst places you could be post Armageddon than playing brown eyed girl on a stoop, like eating rice aroni. He's a really nice guy. Like he's just that sounds fine the, to me. You got yeah. a you know brand new leopard skin pillbox hat. Great with a pill, an actual pillbox. Yeah, shooting and, at zombies. And he's basically keeping me around because I know the lead part to Brown Eyed Girl. Yeah, like you know well, what I mean. You, well, he, in the he's kind of like look, this guy. They're like he's dead weight. Get rid of him. We yeah. don't need him. And he's like, no, he knows the lead part to Brown Eyed Girl. I need him. I would be. I vouch for him. Useless in a <laughs> end of history scenario. Yeah. My first thought would be like, get downtown, get some nice chiffon shirts. <laughs> There's probably I'll be looting. I would be looting. You would be. Oh, 100 percent I'm yeah. gonna long a McQuaid. Yeah. To protect it, actually. Because mm -hmm. they've protected me and my musicianship. Yeah. I'm going straight there and I'm gonna stop the looters. Nice. That's what yeah. I'm gonna do. Yeah. Gonna get down there. You know how I'm gonna stop them? How? By reminding with music, with them music. the rock and roll is real yeah. and it's about love. And in the end, just go the in love there and you just make is while equal, they're looting so and stealing. Stop playing all you need is love. Yeah, or helplessly hoping or yeah. something. And they'll just be like, kind of like, you know what, guys? Put the guitars back. Yeah. And they come over and they join no, in. No, it's the, like, it's okay, man. Yeah. Like, it's okay. No, you're just like, you yeah. know what, guys? Take what you need. It's fine. Or come over here and join me. Yeah. Your choice. Yeah. The choice is yours. I'll respect you either way. Exactly. As a man to another man. Yeah. To a fellow musician. Mm -hmm. We're musicians, right? You could take that guitar and you could go home and you could play by yourself. Yeah. Or you could sit here and we could be together and play. Yeah. That's so true. You make the decision. That's what I'll do. Yeah. Well, and you'll be playing Brown Eyed Girl. That's right. Shooting zombies with a guy and his dog. <laughs> Sounds pretty kind good. Kind of a Ruby Ridge style scenario. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, like, none of this is um, necessary because we could just turn off the internet. Well, yeah, we could, but how does that change the, the tsunami? Yeah. Well, the tsunami This has nothing happen. to do with the internet as far as he's concerned, even though it is all to do with the internet. No, he's the, on a he's <laughs> on an 8chan style kind of I know, but he regiment. thinks this is yeah. Revolution Blues. See what I'm saying? This is all comes back to this. Yeah. That's what the album's about. Partly. Partly. Revolution Blues, it's about Nixon, isn't it? As well. I more than that's I realized. Manson. What? Revolution Blues is Manson. No, that's Manson. I, I, ambulance I Blues is Nixon. Yeah. It's funny how the record is, we talked about last yeah. time, even though it's 73 or whatever, it's like Neil's finally being like, look, the hippie dream's dead. It's done. It's, he's addressing it. He's addressing it in a way that only him and John Lennon did that yeah. I can think of. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a cursory glance at classic rock, but I'm trying to think of any other artist by the mid-70s who'd lived through it. I mean, he was... I thought I actually thought a lot about what Luke said about out on the weekend about the drums on it. Mm -hmm. He was totemic. It's, like, good, it's a good point. Emblem, yeah. it's an, I love those points, yeah. that style of point. He's emblematic of the confessional songwriter. I mean, it is the, also the birds to the eagles, right? Like birds, it's over by the eagles. Yeah. Like it's been commodified. Of course. It's been made corporate. Well, and that's post post Cielo Drive, Eagles, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also I mean, they've kind of packaged it. They've kind of figured out a way to package it. And it is ironic, something that I've been thinking about, which is, this isn't like a hot take at all, but like mm -hmm. I think all of us Neil Young fans know this, 
but I can see it. And I, again, we've been doing this without reading Shaky. Mm -hmm. I can see it more viscerally than ever that it was his most middle of the road record that made him really famous in Harvest. Yeah. Which is essentially just like a kind of rehashing of After the Gold Rush, which is a better record. It's kind of that. Like, it feels For like sure. that. So you see this pivot away from it, like de very deliberate, like, because he never really was that guy necessarily. And he just made this middle of the road record, which is great. But Timing like, was good. Timing was good. And also he's the best at it. And Heart of Gold has a single quality. It has a to singular it. vibe, yeah. for sure. That's like a, it's it sounds an, like a radio hit. It does. A bit. Lyrically, it, it functions in a. If I was Rick Beato, I would say lyrically it functions in a in the same way as like a Drake song. Like it's like a macro micro. Like it's got this big chorus. It's very universal. It's got a riff, and then the verses are very singular to him i've mm -hmm. been a hollywood i've been a redwood uh -huh. it's him doing it yeah. and that's the confessional element of it but the choruses are just like big universal choruses everyone's looking for like a half goal yeah phoenix know? arizona all the way to tacoma philadelphia, philadelphia atlanta la the worst that... routed tour of all time <laughs> your finest joke uh, but um i, think I must have, i can't that... take credit for that one someone must have done that before me well you should because i tell everyone you made it up and i think it's your finest joke it, yeah. it kills everyone I tell it to. I mean, it's some, good, it's some good classic rock shop talk. But I just mean those are good lyrics. People like that stuff. I've been to Hollywood. Yeah. I went from Phoenix. There. People yeah, love that they shit. They love naming things. Yeah, exactly. Naming cities. Naming cities is big. Yeah. 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 It's kind of like the pointing I've been bad. Thing. I've been good. Dallas, Texas, Hollywood. Yeah. People are like, Naming Woo! stuff. It's like you were yeah. talking about with Live Russ when he starts playing that harmonica. Oh, yeah. They're... Everyone's like, yeah, Neil. We love you, Go, Neil. Neil. Go, Neil. Yeah. So, okay. So he's... he's People made... are like, I've been bad and good, too, in Dallas, Texas, and Hollywood. Yeah. It's just kind of guy I've been bad in Hollywood. I've never been bad in Tex Dallas, Texas. No, me neither. I but a lot of people have. I've had like weird times in Dallas, Texas. It was just always too goddamn hot. And all I can think of is Bucky's. Never actually been to Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously Austin, but <laughs> obviously Austin. <laughs> obviously, yeah. Well, everyone in a who's been in a band has been listen, to Austin. Hey, listen, if you're if you're if you know, you know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Everyone fucking hey. plays that place. Austin. I said I haven't been to Dallas, so yeah. I reached a kind of body limit at austin city limits one time just left all my clothes in the hotel and just because i just got up too late i was trashed i remember that what i white remember horse. yeah yeah well i remember what i remember about austin is like when we played south by southwest and then went to the airport the next day and i'd never experienced it it was like a lineup yeah, of musicians shit show lineup of musicians waiting to board the plane and then all of a sudden a bunch of cops came yeah. out and were just walk with sunglasses, like straight up, like mm -hmm. rawhide style. Yeah, you're in Ohio. The and song, and they're and they're walking down the line, looking everybody up and down, being like, "Who do we want to fuck with here?" Yeah. And I remember I've never been more scared shitless in my life. I was just like, "Please, you know, you didn't sleep all night. Just no. please leave me alone." And they did. <clears throat> Surprisingly, well, there's probably a few reasons for that, Johnny. Yeah, mostly to do with my the color of my skin. I imagine that played a big role in it. Yeah, most people were white, to be honest. Yeah, the South by Southwest indie rock lineup to go back to Canada. Let me go back to Canada, please. <laughs> like you just had your fucking exhausted. You've just like been yeah. dragged. Last time I was last time I was down there, I gave CPR. I pulled someone out of a fucking the lake, and the wow. nurse showed up. Thank God. Out of a lake? This person was dead. D O A. And it, and it was uh, <laughs> It was Final Destination. Pulled him out of a lake with, with Zach Gray. They were and, actually dead? No, they were like we were like I we pulled this guy we got to pull this guy out. Someone was on a boat being like, Did we found this guy drowning? Pulled him out, and I was like, okay, well, I know CPR. I'm going to have to do it right now. And this guy's like literally looks like a whale. He's like a he's been drowning. And as I was going to start it, 
and started doing chest compressions. A nurse ran over and was like, I can do this. And I'm like, thank fucking God. Like, and then um, she revived him. He was like a crusty punk type. He'd been in the middle of the lake. And then after that, we were just on the, the path near, like kind of round the lake mm-hmm. in Austin. And someone, we witnessed a horrific bicycle crash. And I was like, yeah. I need to go get some Lone Star. Yeah. Kinds of Lone Star right now. Yeah. That's cool down cool there. The off. tall can't. Well, oh. tr- True Detective was on when we were there. Yeah. It was like the finale dropped like yeah. the week before South by. And the energy was great because it's it's fucking Texas yeah. and like that he's drinking the Lone Stars in it. McConaughey. I love it down there, man. Great, I love that part of the states. Yeah, I, shout out condolences to all our American friends who are feeling the stress leading up to the election. Oh, whatever, they're fucking. They that's just the whole identity of that country at this. point. I know. I'm just saying, some people are probably kind of bummed. You know, whatever. Yeah, but then you know that's why you need to Ruby Ridge yourself. I know. I'm just well for sure, but I'm just. I hey, I don't know much about. It. I'm just saying. No, it's just hope in, you're doing I mean, all right. Okay, score there. Let's. We got a goal. Tampo. Oh, Kucherov. Sorry, I didn't great. realize. I thought that was. No, I didn't realize that no, was the team. Not I'm not cheering for them, am I? Tampa? I mean, they just had a hurricane go through. And look, they're back in action. Yeah, I can't believe the game's even going on, to I be honest. Give a shit, Nothing's, nothing happened. Well, I that's mean, if you real... go Biden making the weather down there. <laughs> this is a Ruby Ridge. They're probably just like... So Revolution Blues is about Manson. Ambulance Blues, I've never seen a man who tells so many lies. He's got a different set of stories for every set of eyes. That's Nixon. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. And then we've got all these like ecological doomsday Obviously stuff. Obviously Vampire, Vampire Blues, the oil, yeah. oil mongers. Yeah. I was even thinking, I'd never thought is about... Wukong just kind of like... I would never thought about what a dark song, See the Sky About to Rain Yeah, is. of course. So, so yeah. If, you know... This ominous foreshadowing. Yeah, like, well, the whole thing is so beautifully orchestrated. Really beautiful. It, I, if you're younger, you don't pay attention to the lyrics. I guess it's, which is weird because I feel like I, that's what I used to do more than ever. Mm-hmm. But I listened to it since we've listened to it and been doing this kind of run. And I was yeah. like, it's strange because you can actually, you can disassociate from the lyrics mm-hmm. and just be into the vibe. You can. Pretty Which easy. is amazing. I think that Do you know what's also interesting for me personally, yeah. which which will be a very different experience for you. These records were seminal to me within that period you're talking about of youth that has it that it that it kind of you know like they're just kind of embedded. They're like bedrocks on my creativity. Mm-hmm. And you know like I don't really listen to on the beach, right? Like very much. And yeah. I haven't for years because it's kind of there already in my head. One thing that's been really interesting about doing this Neil Young discography, like kind of check in, is so many elements of the songs. Like in Ambulance Blues, I'm up in TO, keeping Jive alive. Totally. I never have considered. Like, that shows when I last listened to it. Mm-hmm. I've never been like, man, he's to- like, it's Toronto course like but i didn't know as a kid yeah yeah, I, yeah. It, that could have been anything well to of me. course i didn't know then either you really. would have though you would have because you would have known mm. you're in you're in canada i probably ch- picked up on that like in my 20s though like you know later i yeah. i i definitely went vibe for a long time with these records yeah before i even thought about what he was saying yeah well definitely like, whereas i didn't do that with dylan true i, yeah, true. I listened to every word mm-hmm. with neil it always i think it's because it was informed by his more middle of the road stuff, my my understanding of him. I never considered like ambulance blues or like on the beach as being like they just vibey. I never thought he was doing like a sad eyed lady of the lowlands thing. Yeah, and I mean, I was thinking obviously for my whole life I've been quoting the lyric, "All my problems are meaningless, yeah, but that don't mean that make them it's go away," which is such a great line, but. The other day when I listened to it, I thought about I need a crowd of people, yeah. but I can't face them day to day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a dark lyric that is. Like he needs people around to prop him up. Yeah. But well, he can't actually 
or he he can actually deal with it's them. his own he's sort of his meditations on fame i guess yeah exactly yeah, yeah. but also like that he doesn't want to be alone either but yeah. he like can't handle them too it's yeah. like it's great it's very personal stuff on that song that's like might be his most personal song on the beach what's going on for the turnstiles yeah it's a good question it's a weird one it's great yeah it's like baseball stuff and sailors and american dream style stuff great explorers american dream kind of it the, seems like the, kind the of america of the american dream yeah yeah a lot of it is about death and the ending whole, yeah exactly and it does it clear the air for him to have a good time on zuma maybe good point yeah maybe maybe yeah. Like because kind of after on the beach, you can really learn a lot a... that way. Yeah, it will change you in the middle of the day. Though your confidence may be shattered, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Think about it like that. Actually, this is a hot take. Yeah, on the beach is the sky about to rain. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is like it like literally is. It's the end of the. the the grumpy stuff, the ditchy stuff, <clears throat> it really, after this, is pretty positive Brightens on up. out. Comes at like, times very no, bright. but like, still. I mean, until the... I don't even know what he's done after the Greendale and stuff. Well, that's different. But, but yeah. like, all of the live stuff, like the rust... Like also, need massive apology to our community here. I want to say... <laughs> and I'm looking forward to this. This is an important moment, and it's it speaks... I'm not... My own, I have tremendous amounts of humility. I don't care about being wrong. Of course you do. I do not care about being wrong at all. And I do believe in the power of rock and roll and the power of music. And I've said on the podcast before, the classic example of this is, is 70s Beach Boys. I just, you know, like you, you think, and it's amazing that it can still happen. I have been just loving Live Rust. Yeah. Like loving it. Like you, I, just, I walked in the door and you put it on right away. Well, this, what else is there to listen to? Yeah, exactly. I've been just <laughs> going between. I've got I got surfs up out there right now. Yeah, you do. Live rust and I've had on the beach on, and I've yeah. just been kind of going between them. Uh-huh. Great stuff. Yeah, and it's wonderful that music still has that ability to surprise you, to shock you, to find you. Mm-hmm. Because I've definitely listened to those records before and been like, I can't be fucking bothered with this. And yet now, something about it has changed. Well, in we're me. thinking I've about change, it. Perhaps. We're looking into it. We're going yeah. deeper, and it feels, and it's great. Yeah, I mean, I went with you on that, but I was like, that's weird because I believe in James. <laughs> But I love those records. But I was like, yeah, I think you're right. I'm not but, sure about Russ Never Sleep. No, it's good. Have you tried it? I got it somewhere. Dude, trust me. I think that I might. And I, Okay, I'm going to go even further. Do, more, do, do some more confessional stuff. After the last episode, I did go and try and buy a copy of Tonight's the Night. I went to Zulu, our local record store. Yeah. I went down there. They didn't have Tonight's Night. It was a long shot mm-hmm. that anyone's going to have it. They might have like a reissue of it. I'm kind of looking for the real deal. Mm-hmm. Something, mm-hmm. you know, kind of maybe... It, I don't even know. You know what was. they had in there today? I saw... I, I mean, it, what did they have today? You know what they had today? A record that I've really wanted for a very long time. Yeah. That I don't own. Yeah. That I need yeah. to own. And I mean need. What is it? Capital N. Big Star Third. Yeah. Oh, it was expensive. Original. Though. I saw it. I know. Four hundred dollars. Well, I saw wall. that. I saw it on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah. <laughs> what I was gonna do is the opposite of that, and yeah. be like, they had within their new arrivals used. Yeah. A lot of good stuff. Yeah. Moderately priced. Yeah. Way less than I assumed it was going to be. Yeah. Grant like, was part of that. I told him that today. Yeah. And he was part of it. Between said, about 20 and $50 for like, like Bull in the Ming's vase. They, they had Folk Jokopus. Mm-hmm. Great Roy Harper record for $25 original. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there was loads of Chilton for some reason. And the big star, you know where they came from? Uh huh. Guy who was the rock writer for the Georgia Strait. Amazing. Sold his whole collection to Zulu. 
Tom and, something. You probably know his name. I don't know, but you could tell that they'd got some. They'd got he a said collection. They, in. It all came from him. All yeah. that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they and then I was like, okay, well, these are moderately priced records that I don't need, but it's really cool that they exist. And then I was like, I looked at the CSNY section. <laughs> yeah, you know, they had like Manassas's second record, Down on the Road, or whatever. Yeah. I've got it. Four bucks. Yeah. You know, these records are still $5 yeah, fine. records. No yeah. one, there is stuff that people do, don't care about still mm-hmm. that exists. Oh, for sure. The, the money, the big money, the... the, the it's the, not the, hip. The, the, big, the big issue is, or where they do their business now is in new records. New records, like, whereas it used to be, you, you know, we're looking for Big Star 3. Yeah. You know, that's what we're looking for. I'm looking for Tonight's Tonight. They do their business on like reissues, 180 grams. T Swift. And, and just modern music. Yeah. You know, so their selection is just a bit smaller than you would want it to be. Yeah. Which I don't, I'm all for curation. They're still standing. That's all I know. Which I'm is, still standing. You yeah. know, that yeah. record. You could find that for five. Three dollars. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Should we rank on the beach? Yeah. Um, uh, one, before we rank it, I just, because I think we said every single song on the album, right. except Motion Pictures, which yeah. might be my favorite. It's an absolutely, I just wanted to give a shout out. When that one came on, I was like, it's short. It's yeah. so beautiful, that song. Yeah. He sings in a low register, sings lo- which Neil never low, does. An lower than he normally does. And he sounds so good in that and register. He's just chilling down there. Yeah. I got mine. You sound stoned. I hear the mountains. Yeah. It's so good, man. Just a lot, vibe. A lot with him more of, uh, that's kind of Malcolm-y, like our friend Malcolm-y vibes. Yeah, a bit. Yeah. Um, but like a lot more, there's a lot more Canada in Neil than I ever realized. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more obvious Canada in him. Yeah. More, I think it's- Even Joni has obvious Canada. Obviously she River She has obvious shit, Canada. But and like- Neil has a lot of obvious Canada in yeah, him. Yeah, definitely. Know? Yeah, More than I knew. You can't take the Canada out of a person. You can't. You just can't lead with it, though. It's not possible. No, you can't lead with it. But I don't, care, with it, I don't care if you put, put if you got fucking cowboy boots on, mate, and a fucking... Right. Well, the plaid. And you go down and live in Dallas. Yeah. I don't Dallas, care. Dallas. If you're from fucking Edmonton, yeah. we're going to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, but, um, but anyway, it's a no skips record and I don't think it is conceptual really. I think it is just a no skips record. I think every record that Neil Young makes is conceptual. Maybe. I think he's, he only makes concept records. This is my big takeaway from, from this retrospective is that every record he makes is a concept record right. he's and it's what he's into at the time it's not like is every dylan it's not record we're a concept do Sto- record? Don't, no it's not i it's think not it like is we're doing stone Enge. isn't every dylan record why not it I is s- i saw a great interview with him the other day you've probably seen it before where it's like a 60 minutes thing they're asking oh it. that's the best it's classic that's his that's a very that's probably the most honest he's ever where he's been. like i couldn't write those songs yeah again. it's amazing he no he says he sold his soul to the devil yeah. I couldn't write for those. the ability. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's the best line when he says he says he, he quotes does, it's he all quotes, right, ma, right? Yeah, you know, it, a child's right, ma, balloon, handmade yeah. blade, a child's balloon. Yeah. yeah, all that. And he says, and he says, and he says, you can't do that anymore. And he no. says, no. He says, I can't. He's like, I can do other things, yeah. but I can't do that. Yeah, it's really intense. It's really intense. Yeah, and it's true, man. Of course, it's, it's true. It's, it's it's beautiful. Yeah. But I think every Dylan record is also a concept record for sure. I'd almost say more than Neil. Think about it. Bowie? Mm, bit. Yeah, but Dylan, think about Desire. Blood on the Tracks for sure. Well, yeah. New Morning for sure. Yeah. Well, Nashville Skyline for sure. John Wesley Harding, obviously. Like, they all are. Maybe the big three just kind of blend into each other. Blonde on Blonde, maybe not Blonde really. on Blonde Highway 61 kind of feel like they're blending. They yeah, sound different, not. but it's like the like he's doing like, he's got the bluesy stuff, then the kind of weird acoustic stuff. It's because that's pre-Neil. 
So the concept right. stuff started about 68. Nashville Skyline, John Wesley Harding. Self-portrait. Before that, no one was doing concept. It didn't exist yet. That well, comes, it was like, no, because there's no portraits concept. pre Sergeant Peppers. Exactly. Po- Sergeant Peppers started concept for SF everybody. SF Sorrow, Sergeant Peppers, Village Green. Yeah, but even for the folkies, they were doing it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Blue concept, for sure. Blue 70. Yeah, but no, I know, but that's concept. Yeah. Big time. We got a rank. Do you want to go a uh, bodega for no reason? I knew you'd say that. I and mean, we should think we should we'll think just get about an Uber there. Yeah, we could do it. Just sit there. I mean, what else are you gonna do with your fucking life? Nothing. I'm I'm You wanna I'm, watch the game though, don't you? I mean it's could, kinda your could be fun. It's kinda your it's up to you. Here's really. how we're gonna rank it. We're gonna speed rank it. Yeah. And for you listening, you know who you are. I, Please no no no, don't score it. What? Because we have people who listen to the show. Just give me the scores on Discord, and then I'll notate it later. I mean, I can just score it. Yeah, but then I, I don't I can't write it down. I have all my you, papers you at home. You don't need to. I'll just tell you the final Someone score. Someone will score it for us. It's nice. Okay. It'll be fun. We can just freewheel the scoring here. Freewheeling. Yeah, they'll just write down the scores for us. <laughs> okay. Hangability on the beach. It's like so hangable. Nine. Oh, nine. Uh, nine or ten. JJ Kale's ten is nine. <laughs> <laughs> JJ Kale's ten is nine. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Naturally, Rain ten. Man. Rain <laughs> man. <laughs> definitely, definitely, naturally, definitely, ten. Definitely, technically, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, on the beach, nine. Yeah, yeah. If naturally is a ten. Uh, technical ability higher than normal. Sounds good. Seven. Some of his best solos. Oh, the, his best solos. Yeah, for sure. Best guitar work on the beach. Arguably, his best solo. It's. His best guitar work, I would say. The band is on it. Really good. So their also, technical. Also, like, everyone on it's good. Good. Yeah. No flubs, really. No, not, well, no, we talked about the flubs. Oh, on See the Sky Boats are Rain. Lovely. It's the best. Yeah, we flubs the keys on that. Okay, so. And the yeah. seven's good. Seven's good. Natural. You want to get back in the sports book here? He's got an add-on for something that me and Johnny got a little bit too... <laughs> little a little bit too addicted to a few years I'm ago. I'm down right now. Parlay, rest of the games tonight. <laughs> Rest of the hockey tonight. Well, I, you had to do it on my credit card because yeah, you. I'm good for it. I got cash. Out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, um. Natural ten. Sure. Hundred yeah. percent. Live performance. Eight. Sure. Live, on the beach. Yeah. They're rocking. Yeah. <clears throat> Fashion. The Pretty album's good. cool. That the the, the, the one of the coolest sleeves. Best of album art of any of his albums. By yeah. far. The inside sleeve. Yeah, the flowers. I was I looking got at it. The car and the sand. It's like a cover we can all dream it's of. It's hypnosis making. level. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Eight. Eight. Yeah. The yellow suit jacket. Oh my God. Forget it. The uh, the and then the flowered umbrella that is, is the inside. The inside. Oh, forget give it. me a chance. Yeah, give me a chance. Neil. And cool. It's just Seem- sex appeal. Eh. Dark. Six, it. Five. Yeah, it's not that sexy, but it's sexy. Some of the tunes, man. It's fine. Like Alex swoons to motion pictures. And she all might swoon to that, but listen, you put on "Feel Like Making Love." It's a whole different. Oh, that's game. eleven. Yeah, for her. Don't <laughs> remind me. Yeah. Looks every time like I talk, Billy about, Crystal. Every time I talked about having Paul Rogers on the pod, now he's like eighty-five. She's like, Gushing. gets weird. Yeah, it gets weird me. about it. Yeah, she's a like, kind of. Why like, would don't, you do that? Yeah, don't get him on. The powers or something. that be. She's a bit his... nervous about like her worlds colliding. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I can see that. One hundred percent. That makes yeah. sense. Um, sex appeal five. six five. five. Yeah. It's not as sexy as the Harvest after the Gold Rush era. No, it's not. Um, now we've got uh, business acumen. Low, because it did it didn't do well. Super low. Like maybe him, walk on was kind that of... had a little bit of infamy, but the record was literally unfindable until about two thousand. No one even talked about it. No, and it wasn't released on C D until about two thousand. Bad. Because I had a random copy of it from my dad. Yet it adds so much to his overall lore that makes him still sell records. Yeah, but it's amazing. Three. It's amazing to think that 
that record, even I, like I, I've said this many times on the podcast, I just my dad just happened to have it. He didn't have any other Neil Young records, and it tracks with his age because he would have been seventeen when it came out, mm-hmm. probably fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I don't know. And I remember that the big two, the big two records that that I had growing up that were like mad were on the beach and Pacific Ocean Blue. And you would see them like in record stores in England and it'd be like, then it would be like 150 pounds. Yeah. They were just impossible. No, to, I on know. the beach was an impossible record to own. At I one know. Point. I, I got my copy and original before I got worked at Zulu yeah. at Ditch for 30 or something like yeah. way back. And I was like stoked as oh, hell. Yeah. 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 Um, in England. Business three. Yeah, sure. Innovation. I mean, it's not, eh. no. It's five. Neil. It's Neil it's not just doing five. Neil. It's five. Yeah. It's not an innovation no. thing. Endurance. It's endured. <laughs> Still as good as the first Doesn't day I heard it. Doesn't play anything off it, does he? I've, you know what's crazy? Which is really okay, interesting. I wanted to mention this on the air. Yeah. That on Live Russ, you told me he opens with Sugar Mountain, I Am a Child Comes a Time. Yeah. Seen Neil about six times in concert. Phone that in. Every time he plays acoustic, he does those three to start. Yeah. So that, for some reason, he likes that. But I'll tell you, one year at the bridge school. Yeah. You're going to love this. Yeah. You are going to, you are going to love this. Mm-hmm. He did. Ambulance Blues. Yeah, it's wild. Acoustic guitar with one other man on acoustic guitar with him. You know who it was? Paul McCartney. Bert Yanch. Really? Yeah. That's weird. He played Bridge School, and wow. they did that. The two of them did it together. It was fucking awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Really yeah, weird. Yeah, dude. Really weird. Like, the only time that's ever happened I was there. I have a weird Bert Yanch record was worth more than anything I own. Yeah. Like like I got years ago yeah. that I've never really paid attention to. There's you know, probably should, a video of it. We should listen to Pentangle more. <laughs> yeah. That's some yeah. cool stuff. That's yeah, some kind cool. of pagan kind of Bert eat Yanch, your kids I mean, kind of music. I mean, that guy, talk about innovation. Yeah. So what are we saying? Innovation? No, well, endurance? Endurance high. No, because he doesn't play. Why doesn't he play any of these songs? But it doesn't matter. It still sounds but as good as the day I got it. Why doesn't he uh, he doesn't play anything from Tonight's the Night either. He plays some, the song Tonight's the Night on live on Rust. this, but not now. No way. He doesn't play any. I, I don't songs. know if I've ever heard him do anything from Tonight's the Night ever. He can't. I, World on a string on unplugged in, in on unplugged the record. Yeah, but I mean when I've seen him live. Yeah, but he did it on unplugged. He didn't do Walk On. No. He didn't do anything. Didn't do See a Sky About to Rain. He never plays anything off for the turnstile. No, he doesn't. But that doesn't mean the endurance is bad of the record. No, but it's weird. I'm just thinking it about it. It is weird. It, it is weird. It's his, like if it's his arguably his fan's greatest re- favorite record. Yeah, he could do a great version of motion pictures right now in the low register. He could do... It's Maybe Crazy Horse can't play Walk On. Well, there, it's them on it. It feels heavily produced, though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, yeah. Okay. Well, endurance. I'm because of the record. I'm six, with, seven. Okay, sure. I think that's a bit high, but I think it's a seven. Okay. Well, no, I would say legacy would be higher than that, not endurance. Yeah, we've. I'm still trying to figure this out. But Le- yeah. the legacy of on the beach is high. Yeah, like it's like nine. It's a Neil. It's a, it's a it's like that lost record eight, style. Eight and endurance. I would say is six. But why has it like faltered in its endurance? Because it never was. It, there was no. Oh, legacy. I see. People don't really. Yeah, he he doesn't care about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, six and eight. Good. You know, he doesn't play it. Good. He plays Powderfinger. There you have it. Instead, you I almost, had, you it almost there. had it, dude. Okay, well. Um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, sign off. Okay, well, we'll discuss tapas. Of course, it's in C. We'll, dis- Neil, we'll, we'll discuss tapas. Yeah, okay. Discuss tapas.